Ah, uh, yeah, English learners and Pokemon trainers, what's going on? So Pokemon is undoubtedly one of the most famous anime in the world. First aired over 25 years ago, and with more than 1,200 episodes and counting, children and adults alike continue to enjoy Ash and Pikachu's adventures. Without saying, I'm really excited to present to you with today's lesson. But first, before we get started, if you want to be able to understand fast-speaking natives in your favorite series, like Pokemon or any other anime in English, without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below, and that way you won't miss a single one of our new lessons. Are you ready? Let's go! Ash Ketchum is a boy from Pallet Town. In the world of Pokemon, once children turn 10, they are allowed to choose a Pokemon partner to adventure with, catch more Pokemon, battle against gym leaders, and aspire to become a Pokemon champion by defeating the best trainers in their region, the Elite Four. Ash has just turned 10 and it's time to choose his partner, but he overslept and is late to meet Professor Oak, who will give him his first Pokemon. about it a lot, and it took me a long time, but I finally decided to choose Squirtle. No. Oh. Already taken by someone who was on time. I wish I hadn't overslept. The early bird gets the worm, or in this case, uh, the Pokemon. Does that mean all the Pokemon are gone? There is still one left, but <gasps> I... Uh... Professor, I'll take it! I have to have a Pokemon. Well, in that case... <laughs> Its name is Pikachu. Oh, it's so cute, it's the best of all. You'll see. I thought about it a lot. Did you hear how fast Ash says this sentence? Let's break it down. We have three instances here in which the letter T is pronounced as a flap T. The thought about, about it, it up. Putting it all together, we have, I thought about it a lot. Let's practice. Repeat after me. I thought about it a lot. 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 Oh, I wish I hadn't overslept. We have an interesting grammatical structure here. I wish plus a simple past versus I wish plus the past perfect. You can use this structure to express regret for something or to say that you wanted something else to happen instead. For example, if you say, I wish I woke up earlier, you're saying that you don't wake up early now in the present moment, and you want to be able to do that. Basically, you're stating that you want to establish a new routine. However, if you say, I wish I had woken up earlier, you're saying that you didn't wake up early at a certain point in the past, now you're expressing regret about something that has already happened. This is how Ash uses this structure here. To oversleep means to sleep too much, more than you should. In this scene, frustrated because the Pokemon he wanted is not available anymore, Ash is expressing regret about having overslept. That's why he says, I wish I hadn't overslept. Check out this clip where Ash uses this structure again. I know it doesn't sound easy, Ash. But you're the only one who matches the legend perfectly. What do you say? Well, right now I wish my mom had named me Bob instead of Ash. Uh the early bird gets the worm. These are worms. The phrase, the early bird gets the worm, is a proverb that means whoever arrives first has the best chance of success. Did you know that in English, people who like to wake up earlier than everybody else and who feel more productive in the morning are called early birds? Does that mean all the Pokemon are gone? When something is gone, it's not available anymore, either because it was taken, used, or stolen. Let's watch another example from the series. Whirlwind the smoke! Huh? The Moonstone is gone! Team Rocket stole it! I have to have a Pokemon! Well, in that case... The phrase, in that case, here has a similar meaning to, if you insist. We can use this phrase when we agree to something we didn't agree with before, or when we change our mind about something. For example, once I tried to convince my older brother to lend his Super Nintendo to my friend. 
At first, my brother wasn't very happy about it, but then I told him that if he lent his Super Nintendo, my friend would lend us his Game Boy, so we could play Pokemon on it. After I said that, my brother replied, well, in that case, okay, I'll lend him my Super Nintendo. What is Ash's name in the original Japanese version of Pokemon? Satoshi Hiroshi. If you watch the anime in Japanese, then you already know that the main character's name is Satoshi, not Ash. This is in honor of the man who created Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri. When he was a kid, Satoshi collected bugs in the wood by his house. His friends even called him Dr. Bug because he was so obsessed with collecting and cataloging them. Creating Pokemon was a way for him to reconnect with that fascination he had with nature and different creatures as a kid. You might be surprised that Ash's last name, Ketchum, is a great way for you to learn about connect speech. Ketchum is a play on words. It sounds like Ketchum. Oftentimes, natives reduce pronouns in fast speech. Him becomes im, her becomes er, and them becomes em. So in fact, Ash's last name is derived from the theme song and catchphrase of the series in the USA, Gotta Catch Em All. You teach me and I'll teach you. You probably know gotta is a reduction of got to. So what the catchphrase is saying is that you have got to catch them all, which is one of the objectives in the video games and series. Check out these examples from friends with the reduction gotta. Okay, I gotta run, I gotta go get some name tags. <laughs> you gotta come with me. Ooh, oh, I gotta go. Whoa, oh, head rush. Oh. By the way, isn't it frustrating when you're watching a TV series or maybe listening to an audio in English and the person speaking just speaks so fast like this that you can't understand what they said? I've totally been there in my own language learning. It can just feel so despairing after countless hours of studying to still not understand everything. Now the problem is that traditional schools, like the ones you probably attended, don't teach you how natives really speak. And this is exactly why we created our Fluent with Friends course. Now in this course, you will learn to speak English fluently, naturally, and confidently, and you'll finally learn how to understand natives no matter how fast we speak. And you'll do it all with friends, which various academic studies have shown is the best TV series out there to learn English. So why not give it a try? It's absolutely free with our three-part masterclass. And you can sign up for that by clicking up here or down in the description below now. Oh, hi, Pikachu! Pika. It's also known as Electric Mouse. It's usually shy, but can sometimes have an electrifying personality. I see what you mean. Shocking, isn't it? This clip where Ash meets Pikachu is quite humorous. Professor Oak uses a lot of wordplay. If something is electrifying, it causes excitement. Maybe you have a friend with an electrifying personality. You know, the type of person who you feel more energy just by being around them. However, Pikachu is an electric type Pokemon, so it literally is electrifying. So much so that it electrifies Ash. If something electrifies you, it causes electricity to pass through you. Another way to say electrify is to shock. Pikachu shocked Ash. This has probably happened to you at some point in your life, that a friend touches something static and then touches you and it causes a painful shock. However, if something is shocking, it is very surprising. So this is another play on words by Oak. So although Ash's journey starts quite bumpy, he is able to build a strong relationship with Pikachu. Along the way, he improves as a trainer, makes friends who join him on his adventure, and of course, catches many more Pokemon. Next up, let's see how much Ash has evolved as a Pokemon trainer and how he is able to defeat his longtime rival, Gary, in a battle between Gary's Pokemon Blastoise and Ash's Pokemon Charizard. That's no good. I gotta do something about that Hydro Pump first. That's it! If we can't hit Blastoise, we can hit everything else! Charizard, use Flamethrower to burn the battlefield! Way to go, Charizard! Keep up that Flamethrower! I mean, what a novel and unique strategy! Charizard's flamethrower attacks are melting the field, leaving Blastoise with nowhere to run! 
Charizard, rip Blastoise up into the air! Charizard, don't give in! Seismic toss with everything you got! Blastoise! Blastoise is unable to battle! Charizard is the winner! Blastoise has been defeated! The winner is Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town! I won the first match in the championship tournament! That's no good. I gotta do something about that hydro pump first. Blastoise has water pumps on his back which are mechanical devices that move liquid, in this case water, by using pressure. A pump is also used to inject air into inflatable objects, such as tires. For example, a bicycle pump. Charizard, use flamethrower to burn the battlefield! A flamethrower is an object that sprays out burning fuel. Since Charizard is kind of a dragon, one of his main attacks is his flamethrower, in which he breathes fire from his mouth. Way to go, Charizard! common reduction that happens in native English is when the preposition to sounds like a the sound. This is exactly how Ash pronounces it here. He says, way to go. Way to go, Charizard! Keep up that flamethrower! This is a common phrase verb. If you keep something up, you continue doing it. It's often used encouragingly as we've seen here. So, for example, if your English teacher wants to support your hard work learning, they might say, keep up the good work. Bulbasaur, keep up the good work. Team Rockets, please stand by. I mean, what a novel and unique strategy. The word novel here means something that has never been seen or done before. In other words, brand new. But it's important to point out that a more common way to use this word is when talking about fiction books. Fiction books are called novels in English. You wrote the Angelica Button books. They're my favorite fantasy novels. Um, yes, it's me, the creator of your beloved magical world, full of whimsy and uh, chapters. Charizard's flamethrower attacks are melting the field, leaving Blastoise with nowhere to run. Again, we can hear the preposition to being reduced to a the sound here. Listen again. Charizard's flamethrower attacks are melting the field, leaving Blastoise with nowhere to run. Charizard, don't give in! Ash is encouraging Charizard to keep fighting. To give in in this context means to surrender or to stop fighting. Seismic toss with everything you've got! One of Charizard's attacks is called Seismic Toss. This move involves grabbing the enemy, lifting them up into the air, then rotating them and bringing them down against the ground. We usually see the word seismic being used to refer to earthquakes and the damage they cause. This word is also associated with something that has great damaging effects. If you toss something, you throw it carelessly. Combining the two words, we can deduce that it's a throw that is so hard it can cause an earthquake. This is a very powerful attack that Charizard has. If you do something with everything you've got, you do it using all your strength, skills, and resources. You give it your all. Blastoise is unable to battle! Charizard is the winner! Which noun does the word unable come from? Intellectuality, ability, invincibility. If you are unable to do something, you can't do it anymore, or you've lost the ability to do it. In this case, Blastoise has lost his ability to keep on fighting because Charizard's attack was just too powerful. I've thought about it a lot, and it took me a long time, but I finally decided to choose Squirtle. Go! Oh. Already taken by someone who was on time. Oh, I wish I hadn't overslept. Using one of the structures you learned in this lesson, choose the correct option. I got home late because the meeting was too long. I wish I stayed at the meeting. I wish I hadn't stayed at the meeting. That one was also taken by a kid who wasn't late. Oh, 
Well, that's no problem. Because my Pokemon will be Charmander. Ah! Which proverb means whoever arrives before everybody else has higher chances of success? The early bird kills the worm. The bird gets the worm. The early bird gets the worm. I mean, what a novel and unique strategy! Charizard's flamethrower attacks are melting the field, leaving Blastoise with nowhere to run! We also use the word novel to refer to fiction books, true stories, factual reports. And over! And, and over and over again! <sighs> Just give up and let me cut you down already! Sorry, can't do that. Cause I'm your one and only friend. That's what you said, right? He's planning to settle things with one blast. Once you question your beliefs, that's it. It's all over. I will find a way to save Sasuke. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I believe I'm gonna come after all of that hate that's inside of you, too, someday. <laughs> <laughs>